Welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's discuss about LIFO2 fracture in detail. It is also known as pyramidal fracture, subzygomatic fracture, or craniofacial disjunction. The fracture occurs due to violent force delivered at the level of nasal bone, usually from an anterior direction, sustained by the central region of the middle third of the facial skeleton over an area extending from the glabella to the alveolar margin, results in a fracture of a pyramidal shape. The fracture line of Lefort 2 fracture runs below the frontonasal suture on either side crossing the frontal process of the maxilla and passes anteriorly across the lacrimal bones immediately anterior to the nasolacrimal canal. From this point, the fracture line passes downward, forward and laterally crossing the inferior orbital margin in the region of zygomatico-maxillary suture. It may or may not involve infraorbital foramen. The fracture line now extends downward and forward and laterally to traverse the lateral wall of the antrum. After this, as in Lifford 1 fracture, the fracture line travels beneath the zygomatic buttress, traversing the pterygomaxillary fissure, thereby fracturing the pterygoid laminae approximately midway away from its base. Thereby, it causes the separation of the entire pyramidal block and is completed via the nasal septum. This line represents Lefort 2 fracture line for easy understanding. Now let's talk about the clinical signs and symptoms. We can able to appreciate ballooning of face or moon face due to gross mid-face edema and black eye due to bilateral circumorbital ecchymosis and bilateral circumorbital edema. Bilateral subconjunctival hemorrhage is also evident confined to the medial half of the eye. Depression in the bridge of the nose is seen. Shortening of face along with anterior open bite is seen if the fractured segment gets impacted. Also lengthening of face occurs if there is backward or downward displacement of the fractured fragment. This also presents with bilateral epistaxis and CSF rhinorrhea or CSF leak is also present. The treatment protocol for LIFO2 fracture is reduction, fixation, and immobilization. Reduction. Reduction refers to restoration of the fractured fragments to their original anatomical position. And it can be done by manual manipulation or elastic traction. Impacted fractures can be disimpacted by Roe's disimpaction forceps and Hayton Williams forceps. We can also use head cap or head bandage for extra oral traction. For open reduction, surgery can be performed. After reduction, they are fixed in normal anatomical relationship in order to prevent displacement and achieve proper approximation of the fractured fragments. It is also done in order to preserve the blood supply. Fixation is done by intermaxillary wires or arch bars. The first intact bone above the fractures is used for suspension on each side. The lateral margin of infraorbital rim or the supraorbital rim may be used on one or both the sides. For immobilization, the fixation device is retained for a particular period until clinical bony union takes place. For maxillary fractures, 3 to 4 weeks of immobilization is required, after which prevention of infection is mandatory and gradual rehabilitation of the fracture occurs. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found this video useful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinair. Thank you for watching.